Researchers from Michigan State University conducted a groundwater resources study for Ottawa County. The study used field sampling, data mining of historical well records, and sophisticated groundwater modeling software to assess groundwater quality and quantity. This video provides an overview of key findings of the study. The study was prompted by two primary groundwater issues. First, some areas of the county are experiencing groundwater level declines. Second, groundwater salinity is elevated in parts of the aquifer system. We'll discuss these issues in more detail after reviewing some groundwater basics. Groundwater is a critical resource for meeting human water needs. In Ottawa County, groundwater is extracted from thousands of wells to provide drinking water supply and irrigation water, and to aid in commercial and industrial activities. Groundwater is stored in and moves through aquifers. Aquifers are typically composed of coarse textured sands and gravels or fractured bedrock. By contrast, aquitards are regions that do not easily transmit groundwater. Groundwater is recharged over time by rainfall and snowmelt as it infiltrates the soil and accumulates in the aquifers. Groundwater discharges into nearby streams, lakes, and wetlands, and in the case of Ottawa County, Lake Michigan. There are two primary aquifers beneath Ottawa County. The Glacial Drift Aquifer is a shallow, sandy aquifer composed of sand dunes and coarse textured sediments formed by glacial activity. This is sometimes called the Drift Aquifer. The Marshall Aquifer is a deeper, fractured sandstone unit underneath central Ottawa County. This is sometimes referred to as the Rock Aquifer. Researchers also identified a continuous clay layer in the central part of the county that acts as an aquitard in between the Drift and Rock Aquifers. This restricts local infiltration of rainwater into the deeper Marshall Bedrock Aquifer. The first major groundwater issue analyzed in this study is an observed reduction in static water levels, or SWLs, in parts of the aquifer system. Static water levels are measurements of water levels in wells made by drillers at the time of installation. Decreasing static water levels means the groundwater elevations are lowering in response to changes in the aquifer system over time. As much as 50 feet of lowering has been observed in some portions of the county. This animation shows the simulated static water level changes in the bedrock aquifer from 1966 through 2015. There has been a significant decline in bedrock static water levels, especially in the past 20 years. Look closely at the central parts of Ottawa County. These areas exhibit the most significant declines. Declines in the shallow drift aquifer were also observed, but were substantially less than the declines in the bedrock aquifer, and thus are not shown here. Here's another way of looking at the declining static water levels. This map shows the simulated drawdown in the bedrock aquifer. In other words, this is showing how much groundwater elevations have decreased from their natural conditions. Note the significant drawdown in the central townships of Ottawa County. An increase in groundwater withdrawals has played a significant role in declining groundwater levels. Researchers examined thousands of water wells and actual water use data to simulate groundwater withdrawals across the county over time. The results are shown in these animations highlighting water use over the last five decades. Withdrawals have significantly increased over the past 20 years, especially in the bedrock aquifer. This coincides with the time period over which groundwater elevations have significantly declined. Limited recharge from the surface where the clay layer is and slow movement of water through the bedrock aquifer also contribute to the declining groundwater elevations. The other major groundwater issue analyzed in this study is elevated groundwater salinity in parts of Ottawa County's aquifer system. Researchers used the chloride ion as a proxy for salinity. Elevated chloride concentrations in groundwater is detrimental to crops and unfit for human consumption. These pictures and table help demonstrate some of the symptoms exhibited by plants exposed to elevated chloride concentrations in the water they uptake. To identify areas where groundwater salinity is elevated, samples were collected from 468 water wells across the county in the fall of 2014 and summer of 2015. Historical water well records from the local health department were also analyzed. These historical data were particularly useful for filling in spatial gaps and enabling analysis over time and would not be available without the foresight and effort of Ottawa County to record, digitize, and manage thousands of water well records. Shown here is the combined field and historical data set for CL concentrations. 
Samples collected from wells terminated in the glacial aquifer are shown on the left, while samples collected from wells terminated in the bedrock aquifer are shown on the right. Yellow, orange, and red points exceed the Environmental Protection Agency secondary drinking water standard of 250 milligrams per liter. Red points are over five times the drinking water standard. The results clearly show that groundwater salinity is elevated primarily within the deeper bedrock aquifer and in a few isolated locations in the glacial drift aquifer. Researchers were able to create a 3D map of chloride concentrations in Ottawa County's aquifer system. The animation shown here displays the concentrations at varying depths below the land surface. Orange and red colors indicate higher concentrations of chloride con chlorides. Clearly, the concentration increases with depth and the pollution is most widespread in the deep portions of the aquifer system. The fact that groundwater salinity increases and becomes more widespread with depth suggests that the dominant source is a deep one. If the source were at the surface, for example, from infiltration of road salts or septic field effluent, we would expect an increase in the concentrations as we look closer to the land surface. However, an opposite trend is observed. In fact, scientists have long reported a massive pool of brine, or groundwater that is a few times more concentrated than seawater, sitting deep in the bedrock formations underlying the lower peninsula of Michigan. The figure on the left shows the locations of water wells yielding chloride concentrations above 250 milligrams per liter on a statewide basis. Clearly, the Ottawa lowlands and the Saginaw lowlands are hotspots for elevated groundwater salinity. The Marshall Aquifer is beneath both of these areas and is interpreted to be a conduit for mixing between brines and the fresh groundwater. While elevated chloride concentrations are naturally occurring, they are influenced by groundwater pumping. The map on the left displays present-day groundwater elevations in the bedrock aquifer, with red areas having higher groundwater levels and blue areas having lower levels. The map on the right overlays the chloride concentrations from the combined field and historical data set on top of the bedrock groundwater levels. As shown here, elevated concentrations in the bedrock are focused primarily in areas of lowest groundwater levels. Some of the areas in the bedrock have always been naturally low, for example along the Grand River and in northwest Ottawa County. However, some areas are artificially low because of increased groundwater withdrawals. To recap, elevated chloride concentrations are caused primarily by two factors. One, natural discharge of high CL groundwater into the bedrock aquifer beneath the county, and two, pumping-induced movement of high CL groundwater into areas of significant drawdown. Static water levels have significantly declined in the last 50 years, particularly in the central portions of the bedrock aquifer underlying Ottawa County. Increased groundwater withdrawals played a primary role in this decline. In general, chloride concentrations are increasing with time in the Ottawa County aquifer system. Groundwater withdrawals appear to have made the chloride contamination more pervasive in recent decades.